Hey there everyone, this is Carrie with Any Day Blessings. Thanks for stopping by. If you're new here, I mostly post videos about my homeschool um, happenings with my kids and curriculum reviews and updates and things like that. If that interests you, I would love to have you subscribe and stick around and give this video a like so I know that this is the content you enjoy seeing here. I also will post occasionally uh, just from time to time about uh, frugal living or thankful living just as um, I come across something that I think might be helpful to people who visit me here. Uh, I do have a blog and a Facebook page where you can find that kind of stuff more frequently but over here on the YouTube channel it's mainly about homeschool. Okay, so today's video is about Song School Spanish, book one. There are two books in this series, and it is recommended for the lower elementary. Um, I am using it, I am using it, excuse me, with a third grader and a four-year-old. The four-year-old just kind of pops in because she likes the songs and the video, and she doesn't do the workbook, and she often doesn't even really do the card games, but sometimes she does. <laughs> so it's just kind of um, whatever she wants to take from it. Uh, the curriculum itself comes in a package or this comes in the package too. These are the cards. I'll, I'll show you these uh, in a minute. Um, so the cards, the DVD set, the teacher's edition, and the student book. And that's what comes in their package. Um, Classical Academic Press is the publisher and they actually did send this to me in exchange for my review. So I uh, sent thanks to them for that. This has been delightful and I am so, so glad that I stumbled across this. I, I have seen the Song School Latin in the homeschool community and in videos for quite some time, but I've never seen the Spanish. So I was delighted that um, I looked and found this and I'm happy to share it with you today. I've already done a video showing you all the material uh, and showing you what comes in the package, so I'm not gonna do that today. I'm mainly gonna tell you uh, what I think, uh, how things are going, what I would recommend, all that sort of thing. So this is a teacher's guide, and I'll say at the start, I don't find this essential. This is mainly a, an answer key and an additional practice book. So let me show you what I mean. In here, you will find um, the answers. Let me hold this up a little bit. The answers written in, and let me show you another page. Maybe where it's a little here. Yeah, it shows you the, the, the correct answers being circled there. Um, it's mainly doing that, although you will see from time to time these gray bubbles. Now these gray bubbles give kind of further explanation. Um, if there's an exception to a rule that they've taught that day, um, if they want to give maybe some clarification as to why they chose a certain word over another word because there are um, different nuances and variations within the Spanish language. Uh, we have them in English too, I just don't think that people are as aware of them because it's their native tongue. <laughs> so um, uh, that's what these bubbles kind of cover. It's not necessarily instruction as much as it is kind of extra info. You know, it, it, it's nothing essential to the lesson itself. The teacher on the DVD does the lesson. I don't teach any portion of the lesson to my child. That's all done on the DVD. So I personally don't feel this book is absolutely essential. If you're looking to cut costs and want to buy the items a la carte, um, I, I feel that you could skip this one and still have a wonderful experience with the course. There are extra practice sheets in the back one per chapter. A chapter is basically a week's worth of Spanish if you do three days per week. So it's um, that's kind of how it's broken up. You might hear me say chapter or lesson. When I use those terms, I'm, I'm talking about a week's worth of Spanish as scheduled in this, in this course. So they have these extra practice sheets. We were using them as quizzes. If you watched that unboxing video, you know that was my intention. We did that for about the first four or five lessons and then I said, you know what? He's got this way before the quiz comes. The quiz is basically busy work, so we skipped it. So we haven't pulled this out. I, I've only pulled this out twice in 15 weeks of, of school. So we're pacing it a little different than what they pace it at. So 
we've been through 15 weeks of school and we're at chapter 9. So I think only pulling this out twice in that time makes me think it's not an essential component. I will be doing a final review, a complete uh, written blog review on my blog. So definitely um, head over there and you know look for that towards the end of the school year, which will be May for us. And I'll let you know if I've changed my mind on that. But I really think you could, at this point, uh, skip the teacher's guide if you're looking to economize. The teacher or the student book, however, I believe is an essential component. We use this daily. The way that we're using it, we will watch the DVD lesson, which is about six minutes long. It's broken into three segments. The first segment is the vocabulary introduction, which is about a minute and a half to two minutes. The second segment is like a Daniel Tiger-esque video that follows a child through uh, some task or or um, the child is like showing you around her room and um, the narrator is an adult, it's not a child narrator, but the, the adult is narrating as if they were speaking in the child's voice. So um, it just reminds me of the neighbor segments on, on Daniel Tiger. That's about a minute and a half as well to two minutes, something like that. And then the third segment is like a grammar, punctuation, um, that sort of a lesson. That one is about one and a half to two minutes also, and that one is the most didactic. That one is the most teacher sitting at a table teaching a student, but she's a very um, bright speaker. Um, she's very uh, friendly, always smiling, very engaging to the children, So, and it's only one and a half to two minutes. So she keeps it very age appropriate. I don't feel that, um, you know, it's gone over my kids' heads at all. Um, and I, I highly, highly, highly recommend the DVDs. I, I consider them essential because we enjoy them so much. But I suppose if you had a strong Spanish speaker in your home, you could, you could do this course without the DVDs and just use the included CD in the back of the book that has the songs on it. Um, but I really, I really consider the DVDs an essential component going forward for, you know, because we plan to get the second course as well. We're just loving this. Um, I, I would definitely get the, the DVDs again. They're just, they're just really well done. We really, really enjoy them. They have a sample, I believe, um, on their website or maybe on their YouTube channel where you can see a sample lesson. Um, and you could see how they break it down into those three segments. I, I believe they have a sample of that. So check that out. I think the DVDs are a must. Uh, the student book itself works really nicely with the DVD because your child can sit and look at the vocabulary as the teacher on the, the video is going over it. And then when you sing the songs, all the words for the songs are right here so the student can follow along and learn the song with the words right here. Then there are usually anywhere from um, two to four written pages. I'm going to go up here and show you a more recent lesson that we've done. Because at the beginning, I didn't make my son do all of the writing. <laughs> but now we are. Now we're doing all of the pages in the book. So this is the, the page we would do on the first day with watching the video. And then maybe a second page, depending on you know how things are going. We started off taking four days per chapter. Now we're doing three days per chapter. And um, this was actually the lesson I think we did last week. And so we would watch the video, learn the new songs, and then he did this page. Then the next day we did Spanish. We watched the video, sang the songs, and he did this page. And then, yeah. So I don't know. I feel like... Um, if, if you're like me and just like to start things off slow in general, then four days per chapter seem to work out nicely. But if you just want to do it, like starting off from the beginning, doing it as, as they recommend, three days per chapter, I feel like that pacing is completely appropriate for, for this age group. So I believe the way that they schedule it, you could just follow their scheduling instructions and it would, it would work out just fine. I, I was just a little hesitant because we hadn't done any formal Spanish with my son yet. We had just kind of watched fun videos on YouTube and things like that. And um, I wasn't sure in a more 
course setting, uh, that's C O U R S E or R. Yeah. I, not coarse, like rough. Cause this is very, very nice. Not rough at all. <laughs> um, I believe in that type of setting. I'm, I'm more likely as, as his mom teacher to start off slow just to kind of see how he does. But he actually asked me to speed up. So we were about in chapter five or six and he said, mom, we're going too slow. I need to go faster. And so we, we adjusted and now we're doing uh, the pacing that they suggest in here. We, we haven't used these cards as much as I thought we would. Not because they're not wonderful and fun to play with, but because I forget that they're here. I just get out the book and the DVD, but these are a nice set of very high quality um, matching cards. And um, there's one for every vocabulary word or phrase that they teach. This is all the vocabulary just from chapters one through eight. And then you can see we've got another stack for the rest of the book here. They do give you a bunch of um, ideas for other games. So what I think I'm gonna do with this I think I'm going to use uh, these cards over the summer to kind of keep our vocabulary fresh because I'm just forgetting to use them in the lessons. Um, I wish I would remember to use them more, but I'm just forgetting. So um, we've only used these cards, I think, twice. And um, my kids really enjoyed them and had fun playing the games with them. But um, they're not... Uh, they're not... Um, Part of our, our normal week because mommy just doesn't remember them. One thing I want to go back to the book here. I don't have the little CD because it's actually in our player, but the CD did did actually come for the songs. It did come in our in our book. I do want to go back to here real quick because I want to talk about the songs. Okay, I want to talk about the songs. The songs come in three different styles: chants, which is just like clapping and, and rhythmic, uh, like maracas or tambourines. Uh, songs that are to the tune of like a familiar nursery rhyme or something like that. Like, where is Thumpkin? And they'll teach a song with that tune. And then the third kind of song that they have is, let me try and, like see here, if you're happy and you know it, but they use the word Feliz and Triste and Feliz. So like, they'll use like songs that the kids already know, but then just use them to teach Spanish. But I want to find like an example of one um, I don't know, maybe I think this one was an example of one. They have certain songs that are original, original songs, I'm assuming to the company, that they've made up. I've never heard them before. I've never, I don't recognize the tunes. The songs that are original are definitely more, um problematic for us. <laughs> they're, they're written in a style um, that, that we don't particularly... Um, I'm very conservative when it comes to music and my kids. I'll just say that. Um, and so there's a lot of like runs, vocal runs and swoops and it sounds like ballads. It sounds like they're trying to show off the vocal talent instead of the vocabulary. And that's really the only preference thing that I'll mention about this course. We love everything else. Some of the songs are more like someone's showing off their singing. And it comes across really hard for the children to sing along. My son can sing along with If You're Happy and You Know It. He can sing along with the chanting. But when they're singing one of their original songs, the vocalist gets a little free <laughs> and, and it's not as easy for the child to sing along. It's also not as easy to discern the correct pronunciation of the Spanish word. In fact, one time when they were singing adios, you know, they kind of held it out and swooped with their voice a little bit. And it actually wasn't even how you say adios at all. It, they were putting the emphasis in a different part of the word. And so I caught my son saying adios wrong, and um, it was like adios or something. I can't, I can't even like replicate it because I've just, I've been used to saying it, you know, the, the correct way for so long. But um, it changes the pronunciation of the word when they sing that way. I think this was one of them. I can't remember. <laughs> but that's just my only 
like preference thing that I would say I don't like about it is I wish they would just stick with the chants and like the familiar kids tune songs or if they're gonna write original songs just keep in mind that if that their 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 focus in those songs is the vocabulary not the vocal person you know not the vocal ability of the singer and um, we want to make it really easy for the kids to sing along so super simple you know songs are great you know don't don't you know act like you're on the radio <laughs> just sing a simple song for the kids to follow along with that doesn't alter the Spanish word okay so that's all I'll say about that. When we come to those songs, mommy learns the basic tune and then I simplify it and teach it to my kids. We don't use a CD, okay? When we come to those songs, because it was, it really was actually changing the way he was saying the words. So that's the only little preference thing I will mention about this. And otherwise I can heartily endorse it, heartily recommend that you try it. We love, love, love it, and I'm looking forward to going to book two. Now, let me just give you real briefly my plan for continuing with this uh, series. We will just get where we get this year. We are now up to the three days per lesson pacing, so we'll just get where we get, and we will end in May when we wrap up our school year and then begin again in this book. What I'll probably end up doing is they have review chapters, um, like you see review review, review. I'll probably do um, the review chapters and then whatever remaining chapters we have left just to kind of go back and review from the previous year. Um, that's I'll finish up this book and then I will get book two and do that for the remaining weeks of our fourth grade year. And then, you know, I am going to try and finish that up because in fifth grade, I'd like to move on to Spanish for children. And I will... Um, share that with you another time. That's still a few years away, but that's, um, that, that kind of wraps up this video. Those are my thoughts. Oh, I didn't show you this real quick. I wanted to show you this. They have you make little puppets and the Tortuga and the, um, El Conejo, the bunny rabbit, um, they are in black and white in the back of the book. I just went to my photocopier, my color photocopier, and I copied the the cover of the book and I made these because I thought, oh, these should be in color. These little guys are gonna be with us throughout the whole course. They should be in color. And so I made the puppets in color. And they, they use these little guys to teach vocab to do question and answer. So like they'll like they'll say, como estas? You know, and you say, esta, estoy muy bien. You know, and like they'll, they'll do little, little plays with these little guys. And then they have little um, other puppets. And my, my son, he never wants to color anything. So this is what, the family looks like but they have these that that um, you know we'll play games with too like mommy will hide uh, la familia around la casa and we will go and find them and you know they'll have to say I'll say go find mommy and so they'll have to find which puppet is the mommy puppet so they'll have to know la madre and um, they'll um, sort of mix Spanish and English when they're doing that but that's okay they'll say the mommy is on the and they'll try and think of the word chero. <laughs> it's really sweet, actually. Now they actually know chair, la silla. They know chair, so they don't do that anymore. But they used to do that and just put an O at the end of everything. <laughs> I had to explain to them that wasn't making it Spanish, but it was still cute. All right, now that wraps it up. I'm done. Um, I highly recommend this. I don't really... Uh, um, have anything except that one little bit about the songs to say in a, in a, I wouldn't even call it a negative way. It's a, it's a preference thing, I think for us. Um, but it does affect the, the way that the song or the, the, the children can interact with the song. So I thought it was worth sharing with you all. Okay. Thanks for watching. Take care everyone. Bye-bye.